Hi guys, welcome to the video tutorial for the bow bag. This is the bow bag. It features these channels along the body and then along the strap as well. So it's fully adjustable and it turned into the cutest little handbag. Um, it also has a keychain holder. The download link for the pattern is in the description. If this is something that you'd like to make, just keep watching. Before we begin, you want to get your materials ready. The first thing you'll need is the pattern, printed and cut out. My pattern might look a little different to yours since this wasn't the final file, however the pattern itself is the exact same. If you have ever downloaded a digital pattern before, the process is essentially identical, so I'm just going to speed through this bit. I like to use a guillotine and cut only one side of each connecting edge before taping it. Scissors will work just fine as well, or a ruler and an exacto knife. I just already have a guillotine and I think it's slightly quicker. After that, you just want to cut out all of the pieces, including the two template pieces. The next thing you'll need is some fabric, about 0.5 to 1.3 meters. Here I am using a medium weight cotton twill. I would recommend anything woven and light to medium weight. This is another I made in a nylon Taslan for a waterproof version. You can see the difference, the thinner fabric fabric made. For the lining, you're going to need half a meter. The interfacing, less than half a meter. You can see from the size of the pattern pieces that they're not very big. A number three nylon zipper, 17 centimeters. Ribbon or cord, five meters. A lighter, a long loop turner. The following is for the optional zipper. It does complicate the pattern a little more, so please keep this in mind. The written instructions have highlighted all of the steps you can omit if you decide to remove or change the main zipper for another fastening. The D-ring here is also for the optional keychain holder. Step one, cut out all of the pieces onto both fabrics and interfacing pieces. Following the cutting instructions on each piece, mark all drill holes and notches. Next, you want to fuse all of the interfacing pieces onto the corresponding fabric. You want to interface the tops of the outer pieces and both ends of the straps. This is to back the eyelets and the pocket bag. The interfacing is cut with a 0.5 cm seam allowance so it should be smaller than the fabric. This is to remove bulk. Finally, mark the zipper placement onto the back of the pocket bag. Use the template pieces to mark out the channels on the bag. You just want to place the template pieces on top of the fabric and then I used a iron off pen for this however I actually recommend either fabric chalk or a water erasable marker cut out a 4 by 6 cm square and fold the two long edges inward to meet in the middle and then again in half to create the strap for the d-ring sew down the edge to secure and then feed the d-ring through the strap now onto the main body, you want to sew together both outer pieces, right sides facing each other. You want to sew all the way around the outer edge, but leaving the top open. Whilst you sew this seam, insert the D-ring strap into the seam allowance where the notch is. Make sure you are only sewing through the strap and not the metal. To secure the D-ring, open up the strap and seam allowance on the back and top stitch around the D-ring. I used a zipper foot so that I could get closer to the edge of it. This is what it should look like on the back. Press open that seam. I used a tailor's clapper. This helps a lot with these curved seams. However, do not worry if you don't have one. Now for the internal zippered pocket. Pin the pocket bag to one of the lining pieces, right sides facing each other. Match the two center notches at the top, then sew over the outer rectangle only on the pre-marked pocket opening. Cut along the middle line and into the two triangles to meet the corners of the rectangle. Pull the pocket bag through the hole. You don't want to cut through the stitch line when you cut the triangles. Lift the pocket bag away from the lining and press open the seam. This will create a crispier edge to the pocket opening when it's pressed from the right side. Snip into the corners more if the corners seem a little tight after pressing and it's not really sitting flat. But once again, do not snip into the stitching. Place the zipper behind the opening. Match the top of the zipper to one end, pin in place. If the zipper is too long, this can be trimmed afterwards. And then finally, top stitch around the zipper. Fold the pocket bag upwards in half and right sides together. Stitch down the two sides to close the pocket bag. Measure your zipper from the top stops 
25 centimeters and then add an extra 1.5 centimeters further from that for the seam allowance and trim. Open up the teeth up to the 25 centimeter mark and then remove all of the teeth up to the 25 centimeter mark that's inside the seam allowance and then take off two to three more for some space for the new bottom stop to sit later. Mark the center of the zipper on the right side of the zipper. Depending on your zipper type you might want to remember which side of the zipper is the right side. Separate both sides of the zipper and remove the pull. Fold the extra seam allowance on both sides like so to create a 90 degree angle. Remember to fold on the 25 centimeter mark not at the bottom of the teeth. Once again to leave space for the bottom stop pin to the top of the lining pieces, both right side up. You want the back of the zipper to be facing the right side of the lining piece and the teeth pointing towards the center of the fabric. For the facings, you want to place them wrong side up over the zipper. Sew down this seam, securing the facing, lining and zipper all together. Press open the seam and press the zipper seam towards the facing. This will encourage the zipper to face downwards into the bag. Top stitch on the facing. Place both the combined lining pieces right sides facing each other and sew along the outer edge leaving roughly a 20 centimeter gap in the middle bottom edge. Press open the seam including the seam allowance along the gap. Now for the eyelets and the straps. Punch holes for the eyelets four on the strap piece four on the outer pieces in accordance to the markings on the pattern. Alternatively you can create buttonholes or hand sewn eyelets Eyelets. I just find using metal eyelets to be the quickest way. Use a setter to set the eyelets in the holes. I have a actual setter, however you can use the ones that come with your eyelets. Fold the strap in half and sew down the edge. You may need to use a zipper foot to get past the eyelets. Turn the strap inside out. Depending on the fabric choice, this may be more or less difficult. For the green nylon fabric, a loop turner turned it out without a problem. However, for the twill, I found that I had to use a ribbon to pull the, through the strap first, sew the ribbon to one end and then pull it back through and then unpick the ribbon. Simply because the fabric was so thick, it was kind of really resisting being pulled through. Also, the weave meant that the fabric innately had a lot more friction than the nylon. Press the strap in half. Now, sew down the middle of the strap to create the two channels. For the final assembly, you want to line the strap pieces up with the outer shell pieces, right sides facing each other. In this case, the eyelets should be facing each other. Sew together on the top edge. Do the same for both sides. Make sure the strap is not twisted in the middle. Place the outer shell with the right side out inside of the lining that is the wrong side out. So the lining should be inside out but not the outer shell. Match up the top edges where the strap connects to the base as well as the top opening. Pin and sew all along the top perimeter. Once again I use a zipper foot to get past the eyelids. Cut triangles out of the curved section of the seam. This is to help the seam turn inside out. Cut the corners as well to reduce bulk. Now you want to turn the bag inside out from the gap in the lining. Using the gap, understitch that top edge, the seam that was just sewn. You want to sew the seam allowance towards the facing and then press all the edges. This part is a little fiddly but you want to line up the seam of the lining to the seam of the outer shell exactly and then pin along that seam. I used the pin to line up the seam from the front and the back. I also found that it kind of helps to go inside the gap and line up the notches. Try and get the two layers as flat as possible to avoid bunching when we sew the channel. You also want to pin along the gap as well. This part is probably the easiest because you can see exactly where the seam is through the gap. I also added more pins to the other side of the drawn channel marks for more security. There is a lot of open pins here and I did poke myself a lot. So so if that is something that is concerning for you because I don't want anyone to injure themselves please use safety pins instead. Sew along the four drawn channel marks from the outside of the bag. Finally close the gap in the lining. 
Next, you want to measure out your ribbon slash cord. You can kind of pick whatever length you want. However, I would recommend 1.2 meters for each body channel and 1.4 meters for each strap channel. I tend to wear my bag with the straps a bit shorter. So my ribbons are actually a bit shorter than this. Now you want to burn the edges to seal them shut. Feed a loop turn through the strap and the body channels to pull the ribbon slash cord through. I find that the slightly thinner fabric made this step much, much easier. If you can find a longer loop turner, I would recommend it. I did buy one of those hoodie drawstring pull through things, but my eyelets were 0.5 millimeters and the top of those pullers were too big to fit through the eyelets. So they kind of were useless. Put the zipper pull back onto the zip just a warning this can be quite fiddly and then place the bottom stop on to secure the end of the zipper if you got this far congratulations you've just finished your very own bow bag if anyone decides to make it please tag me on the instagram or my tiktok thank you so much for watching i'll see you in the next one